The Last of Us Part 1 remake is officially here on the PC, and today we're taking a look at it and how well it performs on the PC. I'll be using my 5800X 3D in combination with my RTX 4080. If you remember, the requirements list for this game said you would need a 4080 in order to run the game at 4K Ultra and achieve 60 frames per second. And I said that was absolutely ridiculous and there was no reason for that, and I still stand by that. But today I wanna to see how the game actually performs with the RTX 4080. Now, right now on the screen, you're looking at the in-game settings. And one thing I wanna point out that I really appreciate is the fact that they added live VRAM usage. That means as you change the settings, you can see the VRAM usage go up and down in real time. And I think that is a very useful feature. However, unfortunately, they did not add a full screen or exclusive full screen feature. So points off for that. And today we're gonna to test five different configurations, 4K Ultra, 4K High, 4K Medium, 4K DLSS quality and 4K DLSS performance mode. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. And right here, we have the 4080 5800X 3D playing The Last of Us at 4K on the Ultra preset, everything maxed out, all the bells and whistles. And yeah, as you can see, the developers were not joking here. 60 frames per second is about all you can expect with the RTX 4080, a $1,200 graphics card. Honestly, that is terrible in my opinion. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the 4080 utilization up in the top left-hand corner, we are pegged at 100% almost the entire time. That clearly points to a bottleneck on the 5800X 3D. Also, if you start paying attention to all the individual cores, specifically CPU core 14, 15, and 16, you'll see that we're hitting 90%, 95%, 80%, 70% at a very consistent frequency here. So that points to a strong bottleneck on the 5800X 3D. And that is not something I ever expected to say this soon after the release date of the 5800X 3D. It is still one of the fastest gaming CPUs on the planet. Planet. It is the fastest AM4 gaming CPU, and it even trades blows with some of the AM5 gaming CPUs. And so this is absolutely crazy to me. Now, the silver lining here is that for a game like The Last of Us, you don't necessarily need high frame rates. So that's great. 60 FPS is totally fine. But when you pay $1,200 for a graphics card, you kind of expect a little bit more than that. Lastly, please pay attention to the VRAM up here. We are rocking 13 gigabytes of VRAM. And so if you have a graphics card that has anything less than 14 gigabytes of VRAM, then on 4K Ultra, you're going to have a problem here. And now we're taking a look at the high preset at 4K, and our average frame rate has increased from 60 FPS up to 72 FPS. And overall, that is definitely better but our 1% low is still below 60 FPS and our 4080 utilization is still pegged at 100%. So even though we have taken off about two gigabytes of VRAM, we still have that CPU bottleneck with the 5800X 3D. And so we still have other settings to take a look at, but of the two options right now, I would recommend just using the high preset over ultra. Typically, you don't wanna use ultra anyway. Ultra is typically either diminishing returns or straight up broken. I don't necessarily know if it's broken in this game, but it's definitely a point of diminishing returns. I would say stay away from Ultra and start looking at the medium preset, the high preset, or a combination of the two. And now we're taking a look at the medium preset at 4K. And once again, we've gone up by about another 10 frames, technically a little bit more than that, right around 14 frames here. Our average frame rate is 86 FPS. Our 1% lows are officially above 60 FPS and our active frame rate is above 80 FPS. And so really every time you lower the preset, it looks like you're gaining 10 FPS or a little bit more on average. And definitely looks like if you want a game at 4K and not use any upscaling features at all whatsoever, then the medium preset might be something you wanna consider here, especially if you have a CPU bottleneck. Speaking of which, you can see we still have a CPU bottleneck here. We are still hitting 100% utilization at various intervals. And even when we're not hitting 100% utilization on the GPU, our CPU still has different cores that are hitting above 90% in various cases. We still have that CPU bottleneck, even though we've alleviated some of the settings and we've taken another 1.5 gigabytes off the, the VRAM. Our VRAM now is officially below 10 gigabytes. If you're rocking a 3080 or something like that and you wanna play at 4K, you cannot go above the medium preset because you don't really have much room to play with 
in your VRAM headspace there. Definitely be mindful of that. Now, the longer we play the scene out, the worse some of the stats get. Our 1% lows drop from 62 FPS down to 50 FPS. And so that is definitely less than ideal. But overall, I'm starting to see more games like this, similar to Hogwarts Legacy, where if you want a game at 4K, you might have to use the medium preset, which is not something we're used to saying. Hogwarts Legacy is very similar to this game where the medium preset at 4K definitely seems to be a sweet spot. And now we're taking a look at DLSS quality at 4K Ultra. Now, the thing you need to understand is that anytime you use an upscaling technology of any kind, whether if it's AMD's FSR or NVIDIA's DLSS or even Intel's XCSS, you're not actually gaming at your targeted resolution. Rather, you're gaming at a lower resolution and artificial intelligence has been used to upscale that image to your target resolution at your display. And so in this case, we're gaming at 1440p ultra, re-upscaled to 4K. So this is the exact same performance you would expect to see if you actually gamed at a native 1440p and turned on the ultra preset. And I know some of you will argue with me about that in the comment section, but the game itself actually tells you that. You can see the display resolution is 4K, but the rendered resolution is 1440p, and this is the ultra preset. So there is no disputing that here. And as you can see, our average frame rate is about 90 FPS, and there are several times where we're above 100 FPS, and of course, there are times when we're in the 80s, but our 1% lows are absolutely atrocious here. And I do think that is the limitation of using AI whenever you're trying to get a higher frame rate is that you do make a little bit of a trade-off on the 1% lows. And our VRAM usage is back up to 12 gigabytes. And that is because we are using the ultra preset, even though it's not a native 4K. And our overall GPU utilization is at 99%. So the bottleneck is not not as strong as it once was, but there is still definitely a little bit of a bottleneck there. All right, so if DLSS quality is the equivalent of 1440p, then what is DLSS performance? Well, the answer to that is 1080p. And again, the in-game settings show you that. Now, this is the ultra preset. We're targeting a 4K resolution, but we are using DLSS performance. And so that means our native resolution here is 1080p, but we have upscaled that to 4K. And as you can see, our average frame rate is above 100 FPS here. Right now, we're at about 116, 115 FPS and our 1% lows are in the 50s. Again, the 1% lows are absolutely terrible here, but I do think that is because we are using DLSS. Now, our active frame rate is all over the board. Sometimes we're in the 60s and 70s, and other times we're closer to the actual average FPS. And so this is a way that you can get a little bit more frames if you really need it, but you still wanna play on a 4K display and not have it look all pixelated or blurry because there's not enough pixels to fill up your whole display if you just lower the resolution 1080p or 1440p. And so no matter how you splice it, native 4K or some type of AI upscaling, if you're using the ultra preset here, it's going to absolutely demolish your GPU. So just keep all of that in mind. Well, first of all, if you made it this far in the video, thank you, thank you very much. But secondly, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about all the performance numbers. Were you impressed? Were you shocked? Were you disappointed? I mean, genuinely, I don't know if games are just legitimately this demanding in 2023, or if this game needed a little bit more time in the optimization oven. I will say this, overall, the game does run totally fine. It is definitely playable. We have seen worse for sure, no question about it. But on a $1,200 graphics card, I would expect to see a little bit more than just 60 FPS at 4K. That, that just seems a little bit crazy to me. Well, 4K Ultra to be exact. But a big red flag for me is the fact that they had the 4080 on the PC requirements list even though the 4080 was not even on the market whenever they were working on this remake. So how in the world can a developer require a product, a card, a GPU, that doesn't even exist at the time of development. That makes no sense to me. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've also noticed that if a game has DLSS, instead of DLSS being there to be like a little bit of a cherry on top or to push you a little bit further, it actually starts to become more of a requirement. And as you saw here at 4K, if we really wanted to get above 100 FPS, we had to dip down all the way to DLSS performance mode, which is 1080p, re-upscaled 
to 4K. That is ridiculous on a $1,200 graphics card. I'm sorry, it just is, it just is. The fact is, NVIDIA is offering a product for $1,200, and this is the type of performance you're getting. They don't even have frame generation, which is an exclusive feature to the 4080. You would think they would at least add that while they were adding DLSS and requiring you to have a 4080 for 4K Ultra. Anyway, I don't know. I digress. Look, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. Drop a comment, get subscribed if you're new. I would appreciate it. And until next time, E-Rock out.